For sure. I, I would say 60, about 60% 60 of our student athletes are from the Sacramento region. So um, Reese Hoskins, for instance, the all-star uh, that's playing for Philadelphia Phillies right now, is a, mm -hmm. uh, born and raised here in Sacramento, went to Jesuit high school, had a great career at Sacramento State, and now is a major league all-star. So we want more and more um, local talent to stay home and see Sacramento State as a destination where they can play ball and get a great education, give back to our community, and it's a that's the goal. So now I'm here with Mark Orr. He's director of athletics at Sacramento State University. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. This should be fun. Uh, yeah. So, so Sac State athletics. We know it's changed over the years since you uh, uh, played there as a kid, as a as a younger person. You used to go over there and, and uh, I guess uh, throw the ball around a little bit, hit the ball around a little bit. So now that you're there uh, in in the in the last several years, uh, Sac State's changed a bit. It definitely has changed. Not just in athletics, but the university in, in general. I. Growing up in this community and, and being around the university and, and seeing how it's, it's evolved over the, the course of the last 10, 15 years, it's just been tremendous. Uh, new buildings are popping up on campus, a new science center, $91 million facility. It's got a huge planetarium, uh, an expansion of the student union, new student housing. Um, so the physical presence on campus has just changed, and President Nelson has done a tremendous job yeah. Uh, of changing uh, the environment at Sacramento State. I agree 100%, um, and I love what's happening at Sac State. They're doing things in entrepreneurship as well. I want to talk about Sac State today, but I'd like to go back in time. So you grew up here in Sacramento, but then you uh, you didn't make you, – you went away to continue to build your career, right? What happened? For sure. Uh, born and raised here in Sacramento. Uh, what high school did you go to? I went to Christian Brothers Christian High School. Christian Brothers, Christian okay. Brothers High School. And I was just telling some folks, when I was at Christian Brothers, we won the Holy Bowl. We haven't won many Holy Bowls uh, versus Jesuits since then. Right. Um, but went That's to Christian back Brothers. when you were all boys, right? Yeah, it was all boys yeah. school. Uh, I was fortunate enough to get a football scholarship to Cal Berkeley and was a was a Golden Bear. Wow. Um, unfortunately, at Cal, I had three reconstructive knee surgeries in a four-year uh, football career. What so, position did you play? Defensive back. Okay. Played defensive back. So it, uh, I tell folks all the time, uh, all of our athletics careers end at some point, playing careers end yeah. at some point. So mine happened to end in, in college, but I did well in school and got involved with college athletic administration, first at Cal, and then I went over to St. Mary's College in Moraga, California, mm -hmm. and became the athletic director there. And I, I was at St. Mary's for 16 years. I uh, built a great basketball program, made a sweet 16 run in, right. in 2010, and I recruited this area in, in Sacramento. I had several. <laughs> you came and stole all yeah, our yeah, guys, yeah, took them to the Bay Area. I uh, <laughs> come over, my wife and I had a beautiful home in Walnut Creek and enjoyed it, and then Dr. Nelson gave me a call a couple years ago. If I wanted to come back home to Sacramento and lead Sacramento State. So. I guess that's what you don't want to have. If you're a hometown that launches uh, an athletic director or a head football coach or something, you know, and they, especially when they only go like two hours away, when they come home, they're going to have access to all your talent <laughs> and they take them so that the, uh, the local schools can't get them. But we fix that now. You're now over at Sac State. Well, I'm so a they, yes. So uh, you're here to protect our, uh, our Sacramento talent and get them over to Sac State. Yeah, for sure. I, I would say 60, about 60% 60 of our student athletes are from the Sacramento region. So um, Reese Hoskins, for instance, the all-star uh, that's playing for Philadelphia Phillies right now, is a, mm -hmm. uh, born and raised here in Sacramento, went to Jesuit high school, had a great career at Sacramento State, and now is a major league all-star. So we want more and more um, local talent to stay home and see Sacramento State as a destination where they can play ball and get a great education, give back to our community, and it's a uh, that's the goal. Yeah, so you you were a football guy. I imagine you played other sports as well. I mean, back uh, back in the day, people played three sports all the time. Um, can, is that a fair assumption? You were, or were you just yeah. a football guy? No, when when I was when I was a kid, it's probably a little bit different than it is now. We played, you know, it was seasonal. You played football. You yeah. played basketball. You played baseball. I ran track. All of my buddies and friends, we all played sports. So it's a little bit different now, but. Yeah. I played everything, and then it wasn't really until I got to college that I focused on football. Okay. So now you, you have this uh, hyper-awareness of the local scene because you've been in uh, 
uh, at the athletic director over at St. Mary's. Now you're here. You've been here a little over a year, two years? Uh, almost two years. Almost two years at Sac State. How's the talent here in the local region? You say you get 65% of your uh, athletes from Sacramento. I mean, I How's the talent stack up to from other areas? Why do you get them from here? Well, I think the local talent in Sacramento for a long time has been underrated. Uh, is tremendous, tremendous talent here in the Sacramento region, and not just in the city of Sacramento, in in Carmichael, in Elk Grove, in West Sacramento, El Dorado Hills, all the way down uh, towards Turlock and Merced. Um, there's tremendous, tremendous uh, uh, high school um, student athletes coming out of the Sacramento region. So. Um, we got to keep them home, yeah. and we got to get them to stop um, uh, going away from Sacramento. Well, so. well, it's interesting. It makes me think about like regional leadership, right? So I'm trying to help the entrepreneurs regionally in my own way, but thinking about a guy in your position, uh, and, and the high, so you're reaching to the next, helping the next guy in line to a certain extent, right? These athletes are starting. You got all these high school football coaches, or baseball mm -hmm. coaches, or volleyball coaches. Um, they're trying to do their best to sort of unleash the potential in these young people and so that they're ready to play at the next level in many cases. So thinking about that, how much of your world is spent at the high school level trying to um, maybe uh, – get into the heads of the high school football people or the, I keep saying football because I'm a football guy, yeah, but sure. like the, uh, the coaching people and the athletic people in town is, is there any responsibility that, uh, that you take on in terms of like helping develop that talent earlier on, or is it just wait for it to group pop and then you grab them? No, I, I say definitely. We, we offer youth camps okay. at Sacramento state where we're bringing in uh, youths and kids onto campus over the summer during the winter break period where we we'll offer camps for just about every sport. We have 21 sports that we offer. So just about every sport, there's a youth camp and, and, and a development um, for, for young people in our area. And then our student athletes and coaches get out into the community. We do coaches clinics. We do referee clinics for, okay. um, for referees, youth referees. Um, we invite uh, kids out to all of our games. So it's important um, that we do that and it's important to give back to the, to the local sports organizations. Well, we're thinking about uh, the Stingers, the, the, or excuse me, the Hornets. I was thinking Stingers up because I'm always talking to Robert Nelson. He's always <laughs> Stingers up, right? And it's, you know, it's kind of got, he's motivational. Um, so he brings you in. How has Sac State Athletics changed? I mean, it hasn't been known as uh, the hotbed for sports over the years. A commuter college, mm -hmm. as, as a lot of people think of it. Um, but things are beginning to change. Talk about those changes. Things are changing. Um, and just this year, you know, our baseball team went to the NCAA Regional, beat number one UCLA yeah. earlier in the year. Our men's soccer team beat Cal. Our softball team beat Stanford. People in this community don't realize Sacramento State's big-time athletics. We play against the best in the country, and um, we certainly are going to compete um, that way. I made a football coaching change um, this year, and anytime you make a change in, in coaches, it's, it's, those are difficult decisions to make. I made a change and, and brought back home another local um, prominent figure in Sacramento, and Troy Taylor. Um, Troy was an All-American quarterback at a Cordova High School, um, built the Folsom uh, Bulldogs football program, uh, played in the NFL, had tremendous amount of success as an assistant coach at Cal Berkeley, University of Colorado, and most recently at, at University of Utah. So to bring Troy back, back home, and then uh, he brought along Chris Richardson, Folsom's mm -hmm. um, head coach, and Bobby Fresquez, who was also a former NFL quarterback, so having those guys, along with Reggie Christensen, who's our, our head baseball coach, and Brian Katz, our head basketball coach, really has changed the game for us in terms of in terms of the local community. Well, a lot of us that follow high school football a little bit know that uh, Folsom High School has been fairly dominant in the region in, in recent years, um, and it's, I think it's really put Sacramento on the map. I think when a team like Folsom steps up and starts playing at this other level, then Delaro needs to do it, and the, the other, you know, Jesuit, and everybody. Everybody else sort of raises their game. But thinking about Troy's offenses that I remember is like a lot of great quarterbacks come out of, out of Folsom, right? And it's no, it's no coincidence. So thinking about Sac State and the, uh, the way the offense might change, I mean, I sort of wonder, is this going to be a real passing threat? I mean, can we uh, envision uh, quarterbacks being developed that might go to the NFL out of Sac State? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and there's no reason why it shouldn't be. And that's the expectation. That's part of the reason why I'm here. That's part of the reason why we brought Troy aboard. We're going to play. We're going to play exciting football. We're going to throw that ball around. I told Troy, I think there, he had told me in, in, when he was at Folsom, they didn't punt. He didn't punt the ball. 
So I don't expect us to punt. We don't even need to <laughs> they recruit never punters. Punted? I was going to tell uh, <laughs> you know, the the Air Force gentleman that we had here who said he was a, a punter that we wouldn't recruit a punter yeah, yeah. anymore. We don't we don't need punters. So at, you at don't need. State. So all you punters out there, uh, you don't need to go to Sac State unless uh, you just going look, for it on yeah, fourth and twenty, <laughs> and we're going to fling that ball down the field. That's um, so it, it's going to be fun football. Something that this community can be proud of. Um, I've, one of the reasons why I'm back, Mark, is that. There's no reason why college sports shouldn't work in Sacramento. You know, with the success that the Sacramento Kings have had in the Golden One Center, it's tremendous for this community. With the River Cats, um, I think the River Cats for a long time has led minor yes. league baseball in attendance, and the following has been great. Yeah. The Sacramento Republic and what they're doing is tremendous, and I think we're going to get an MLS franchise here in Sacramento. Why can't college sports work here in Sacramento? And Sacramento State is the four-year university. I apologize to my folks, uh, friends in Davis, but Davis isn't Sacramento. We, mm-hmm. we are Sacramento State, and President Nelson's vision of being an anchor university in this community as a university is important because athletics falls right into that. Mm-hmm. And just like the folks who live in Columbus, Ohio, they support Ohio State, whether they are an alum or not. If you live in Louisville, Kentucky, you're a Cardinal. If you live in Austin, Texas, you're a Longhorn. If you live in Sacramento, you're going to be a Hornet. Yeah. And, you know, support the local college team. And, and we've got to do some work and put a product out there that the community can be proud of. I believe we can do it. Mm-hmm. And bringing coaches like Troy Taylor and, and Reggie Christensen aboard to, to help us do that um, is important. But us getting out in our community – and telling that story is probably even more important. Well, we, you know, as the, those of us that follow college athletics a little bit, um, we know of the, there's a lot of schools that we we only know them because of their sports teams. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter any uh, any my my grandson who's like six, I could name a, a college and he'll tell me what the mascot is mm-hmm. because he knows it, right? It's mm-hmm. and he doesn't know it by uh, the curriculum of the school or anything, but he knows it by the football team or the baseball team. We know things. We identify schools around the country um, by their athletics. So I'm thinking of like Sac State. What will we be known of? If you project out, say, 10 years, I mean, who might we be able to compare ourselves to in terms of being known for, uh, for our athletics? You know what? That's a, I, I would hope we're knowing for ourselves. We're unique in, in, in our market. But I, I, would say, um, I would say a Fresno State is a good comparison. Okay. Um, you know, I, 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 you think of uh, uh, metropolitan areas that don't have an NFL a franchise or right. a major league baseball franchise where college sports is is the thing yeah and that's what i what i hope we become and you know that you again i think you could do it in a way where you're not competing with our partners at the with the kings and the river cats and the republic right. i think we all can collaborate and do things together um, but we can we can uh, create our own niche and uh, do something that's uh, family friendly. And I think the people in this community will support these college kids and what they do. So help uh, a layman like me understand what your tools are when you go to recruit an athlete. Um, what can you offer them? Are there scholarships? How many scholarships are there? Is that a piece of it? I mean, because obviously you have a guy like Troy Taylor. That's a legitimate. He's a magnet. He's going to be a magnet for certain kinds of talent, especially people that want to be on a on an offense. You know, if you're an offensive player, you're going to want to be associated with Troy Taylor. But beyond uh, hiring a great coach or coaching staff, I mean, what other tools are your disposal? Yeah, uh, scholarships for, for sure. We offer the NCAA maximum in scholarships. Okay. Um, so the, the maximum that the NCAA allows, we offer. Mm-hmm. Um, so football, that's 63 full scholarships. And, and basketball, that's 13 scholarships. And women's basketball is 15 scholarships. So we offer full scholarships to, to come to Sacramento State. We also offer an opportunity to play in what, what I believe is going to be continued better facilities to participate in. Our, our baseball stadium has undergone renovations over the last couple of years. We have plans to do more. Um, our football stadium um, seats 22,000 people, and it, yeah. it continues. Um, uh, we, we built a new locker room not too long ago, new weight room. So that facility is a, a, a good facility. And then, obviously, we have plans to build a new event center and a, and a basketball facility. So I, I think there's that opportunity. And, again, we're going to compete against the best. You know, when I said earlier – um, you know, our baseball team played UCLA and won. Our softball team played Stanford and won. This year, our football team's going down, and we're playing Arizona State. 
We're going to play at uh, Fresno State this year. In 2021, we're going over to Berkeley, and we're going to play at Berkeley. Hmm. And I and am fo- and in football. football. You, can play Ber- you can play Cal. We're going to uh, play at, at, Cal Cal. And, at Cal in 2021. Um, so we are going to go out and, and play against some of these Pac-12 programs mm-hmm. and get a chance to compete against the best on the West Coast, sometimes the best in the country. And if I'm a, a prospective student athlete, I want that opportunity. And you can do it right here in Sacramento, and we will have success. Mm-hmm. I, I believe we'll have success. So, you know, a lot of us, we follow uh, college sports, and, and the guys get most of the attention. They get probably more of the TV time and things like that. I also like watching softball. But from on the women's side of the equation, how much, uh, how much attention do they get? I mean, do they get the same amount of funding? Do they get the same amount of scholarships and so on as what the, as what the guys get? You know, women's sports, we actually award more scholarships oh, okay. to women than we do men. Um, and, and some of that has to do with gender equity. Some of that has to do with just – it's amazing to watch these young women compete. Um, I think women's va- women's athletics are undervalued, and uh, you know women's basketball is, is tremendous to watch. And we have a terrific women's basketball team. With what's going on right now with the women's World Cup, I don't know if you've been able to watch some of the World Cup. Um, yeah, it's getting a lot of it's uh, no, it's, yeah, it's seen a lot of, a lot of cool and, stuff and out there. Women I've seen are, just a little bit. And what women are doing in the, in the uh, in the sports world is just is just tremendous. We had a young woman this year who made the NCAA nationals in track and field. The first first time we had a 200 meter runner, um, and this young lady, I mean, I think she ran uh, the 200 meters under 24 seconds, and it was just amazing of, of, of how fast she got around that track. Much faster than some. 40-year-old guy with broken knees can even <laughs> think about uh, uh, running. So, um, so women's athletics is, is strong, and there's a lot of young girls in this community who look up to our, our, our women, uh, women student athletes, especially with the lack of, in the Sacramento area, women's professional teams. Mm-hmm. So um, we can be a, a trailblazer in this community for women's sports. So thinking about you coming back, so you had this uh, great career. Your dad was uh, obviously a very successful uh, in professional sports Mm -hmm. um, as a scout and as a pro player, right? So uh, he was with the Yankees. The Yankees. Yeah, so your dad's got this uh, very high baseball IQ. He was obviously a great player and um, had probably had high expectations for his son. Um, you, uh, You achieved, and after injury, you've continued to succeed and press 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 now that you're back so coming back home the feeling when it's like oh i'm back in sacramento what's the feeling i mean as you come back in and your family i'm sure is uh you know super happy to have you home but i mean your friends from back in the day right what's that yeah. feel like coming back home kind of like a hometown celebrity in some ways right well i wouldn't call myself a hometown <laughs> celebrity but it's been great to be back home my dad obviously I was so successful in in a baseball, uh, professional baseball, and I couldn't hit a curveball. So you know, I was I put on a football helmet and rent and, and played like football. To hit yeah, I, you know, baseball was a little bit something I couldn't I couldn't do very well. But it's been great to be back home, and you know, it's personal for me. I could have stayed at St. Mary's College for the rest of my career. I was very very happy there. My wife, I have two young boys, ten and twelve. They're into little league and everything else. We had a wonderful life, beautiful home great place to work but this is personal this is personal this is me coming back to this university leading the athletic program like I think it should be led filling a a place in this market for college sports which you know I I think this community would rally behind and support Um, we've got a lot of work to do Um, we got to hire the right people we got to recruit the right student athletes we got to tell our story better you know coming out on the Mark Haney show is, is part of that um, we got to tell our story and become a little bit more relevant in our community so, so prospective student athletes can see themselves playing there. Um, folks who may want to catch a football game or a basketball game will see Sacramento State as an option to, to spend their hard-earned dollar to, to watch a ball game. Um, uh, corporate partners and businesses out there can see it as a as a as a uh, option to be a corporate sponsor mm-hmm. of our athletics programs. But we have to um, become relevant and tell our story and be out in the community, and that's right up my alley, especially being from here. Um, I, I know a lot of people and been able to reconnect. Um, everybody's been so welcoming. Everybody's been really surprised and amazed the job that Dr. Nelson has done yeah. and since he's been president and, and becoming more of a presence in Sacramento. And I hopefully can open some more doors and, and athletics and sports um, can hope and hopefully 
um, show a little bit of, of the good side of Sacramento State. Yeah. Well, I think you are definitely bringing that. I, I mean, uh, your personality uh, is, uh, I would say, magnetic in many ways. I'm, obviously, you've attracted some talent already to Sac State in the term in terms of coaching. Um, but talk, thinking about Dr. Nelson, he's been on the on the sh- on our show a few times. And I've got a chance to know him, and I think. His personality, as I sit here and go, you know, we're talking about heroes a little bit, and I think about, um, you know, if I'm if I have a child and they need to go to college, and I'm thinking about where I might steer them, you know, I want to steer them to where they're going to get the right mentorship, the right um, character building opportunities, and you know, someone like uh, Dr. Nelson, Robert Nelson, I mean you know he's going to have a good impact on your kid, right? You know that. So, you know, so, you know, in terms of education, if I was to think of Sacramento, I think of Robert Nelson as one of those heroes. So now that we're, you know, brought up the subject uh, with our earlier guest about heroes, I'm thinking for you, like, as you think about what a hero means today in today's day and age, I mean, who, who comes to mind for you? You know, um, there's several. Obviously, our, our military and what they do every day, our police force. We just uh, lost a young woman, Terrell Sullivan, um, who was a, a police officer that just yeah. uh, uh, got shot uh, a, a couple days ago. Sac State uh, alum, President Nelson. Talk about the type mm-hmm. of person President Nelson is. Um, reached out to her family immediately, hosted a vigil on our campus, uh, brought hundreds of people of our community here. So you think about all those police officers every day, those firefighters, those military personnel. So those come to mind. And then others will be the, the hardworking moms and dads out there who just do everything they can for their children and at whatever means they have to do that. Yeah. And those are the true heroes, the true educators. Um, what I get to do every day is, is just a privilege. It's fun for me. And if Dr. Nelson's not listening, I would do this for free if nobody <laughs> would ever, you know, ask me. I, I got the greatest yeah, job in awesome. the world. I go, I go to work every day. I work with college students. I deal with college sports. Um, it's awesome. Hopefully I can make an impact and a difference uh, to young people. I, I do see myself as an educator, um, but it's a, it's a privilege. And there's a lot of people out there who, who provided those opportunities for me to do every, everything I do each day. And um, those are the heroes. And uh, certainly Dr. Nelson is one of those. Um, he truly does care about every student that walks through that door. I don't think the, the gentleman sleeps at night. He gets to everything. His door is always open to students. And uh, it's just, uh, it's amazing to watch. And he's a, he's a wonderful person to work for. Yeah, I can definitely see that leadership team at Sac State uh, rounding out very nicely with the addition of Mark Orr. Appreciate you coming back to town, what you're bringing uh, to Sac State and uh, what you're bringing to the entire region. Thanks for what you do. No, thank you for having me. And thanks for what you guys do every day for this community. It's, it's important work. So thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark.